Uh, in this video, we're gonna learn Polya enumeration theorem. So let me begin with the de with the definition. G acts on a set X, and then for any element sigma in G, we have the corresponding corresponding permutation. A sigma bar of x. So each element in G will permute the elements of x. Okay, then we define a cycle monomial Z of sigma is equal to z1, c1, c2, c2, da 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 z to the n, c to the n where uh, ci is the number of cycles of length i in a uh, sigma bar and here uh, n is the number of elements in x n is the number of elements in x cardinality of x because uh, the maximum length possible is cn because there are at most n elements in one cycle and the cycle indicator or also called a cycle index they mean the same thing of g uh, acting on x is denoted z uh, capital g z of g comma x it is one over the cardinality of g and summation for all sigma in g the cycle monomial of sigma. So here, uh, the cycle monomial we use uh, lowercase z. In the first cycle indicator, we use the uppercase z. All right. So let's see an example. G is the dihedral group, and x is the set of vertices of a square. So d four acts on this set. Vertices. Okay, we can list the f there are eight elements. So let me uh, draw eight elements. Maybe I can just copy and paste. Let me try. Um, all right. One, two, three, four, five. Or more let's see okay so there are eight elements like this all right let me move this a bit over here and we can uh, visualize the group action so there are and um, so this is nothing we do nothing and the, but here is rotation 90 degree so 90 degree So identity here uh, 180 270 and we uh, flip along this line this line and this line uh, I need one more and this line all right so there are eight elements in d4 and let's see what it does to the vertices. So it does nothing. So it sends one to one, two to itself, three to itself, four to itself. And if you if you do this ninety degree, one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four, four goes to one. And 
180 degree, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, 4 goes to 2. Uh, 270, 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, 2, and then 1. And for this flip, 1 and 2, I exchange it, 3 and 4, I exchange it. And here, 1 and 4, I exchange it, 2 and 3, I exchange it. And for this flip, 2 and 4 stay the same position, and 2, 1 and 3 change their positions. And finally, 1 stays the same, 3 stays where it is, and like this. Alright, now let's write down the cycle monomial for each uh, group element. So here in the first group element identity, uh, the f there are four cycles of length 1, so it's going to be z to z1 to the 4. And here it, ha it has one cycle of length 4, two th there are two cycles of length 2, so it's z1 to the z1 squared, and one cycle of length 4, two cycles of length 2, two cycles of length 2, and here uh, there are two cycles of length 1, so length 1 cycle, there are, there are two copies of length 1 cycle, so one copy of length 2 cycle, and here the same, two copies of length, length 1, one copies of length, length 2. So the cycle indicator d4 comma x in this case one over four uh, one over eight eight is the number of group elements and we add all the cycle monomials that we computed so there are uh, there's one z1 to the fourth and z1 squared z2 there are two of them like here and here and z2 squared, there are 1, 2, 3 z2 squared, and finally uh, 1, 2, z4. So this is the cycle in indicator or cycle index. Alright, so why is this useful? And here is the theorem, statement of the theorem. Uh, let me write this theorem using blue color. So theorem is Polyath, uh, Polyath enumeration theorem. Enumeration. Okay, so here is the setting G acts on X and then G also acts on the colorings uh, Y say Y of X with colors say B1, B2, dot 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 BK there are K colors available and y is a set of colorings of x using these colors. Then the cycle uh, weight enumerator for the action g on the coloring y is equal to the cycle indicator on X with ZI replaced by B1 uh, to the ith power da, 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 BK to the ith power alright so here is the theorem let's prove this Proof. So for a sigma in G, let a sigma bar be the corresponding permutation. So 
corresponding permutation of x. So x, a sigma bar is a permutation of x. And let me recall you, uh, sigma, uh, the group G also acts on the coloring uh, from this action. So each element in the coloring in uh, Y is of this form, of this form. Each coloring is like Y, if, if the coloring is Y, then is a pair x comma f of x where x for all in x is a pair of um, x comma f of x where f of x is uh, assignment of color to the vertex or element x and in this case for sigma we have the action this is a recall of the action action uh, g on y uh, as follows by the following rule sigma double bar so the coloring if we have coloring in this So for this coloring, it will be sent to this coloring. So this is the definition of the action coming from, action of the coloring coming from the action of x, action on x. Okay, so now by uh, weighted version, of Burnside Lemma we have the fact we have this summation so for all orbit of the coloring is equal to 1 over G summation Sigma in G and Y in fix of sigma weight of y. Right. Here weight is uh, weight of the coloring is the product of the colors, the monomial which is the product of the colors used. Alright, so now suppose that sigma uh, in G has a cycle monomial Z one C one Z N C N. All right. Then what this means is that sigma bar, which is a permutation on X, has by definition of the cycle monomial, this has uh, ci cycles of length length i. Okay. For i one two dot 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 n. Now we want to we want to know which colorings are fixed by this uh, this action. So suppose that y, a coloring y, or let me write y this form. X comes. The coloring is can be written in this way. This is in the, in the set fix of sigma, meaning uh, sigma fixes y. Okay. That that means that means uh, sigma double bar of y is equal to y. But what is sigma double bar? Mm -hmm. What is this? 
so by definition this is sigma bar x f of x x is in x and we we because of this over here this is equal to the same as y but uh, what we can rewrite so let me, let's see here y is written in this way but can, but we can rewrite y as follows it's not very visible so y can also be written using sigma bar I just replace x with sigma bar because x is a permutation uh, permutation of x I'm um, oh, sorry uh, sigma bar is a permutation of sigma bar is a permutation of x so it's instead of considering all sigma all x we can consider all sigma bar x so because we don't consider the order in the set these two are the same I just what I just what I did here is I replaced x by sigma bar of x and from the condition that y is in y is fixed by sigma we have these two these two must be the same that means uh, y is in fix of sigma if and only if we have the same pair so here uh, let's say this part must be equal to this part for all x that means the color f of x must be equal to the color sigma bar of x what does this mean as for all x and this means all elements in one cycle have the same color so thus for each cycle of length i So for each cycle of length i, there are i elements in this cycle. We have to color them all with the same color. So for each cycle, we can color the i element. We maybe we, instead of can, we should, we must. We must color i elements with the same color. That means um all right and the choice of this coloring is independent of each other for each cycles so the choices for coloring are distinct cycles independent of each other So we can focus on each cycle and just color the all elements in that cycle with the same color. That means sigma y in fix of uh, in sigma weight of y. This can be obtained like this: b1 plus da 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 bk c1. This means for each cycle of length one, uh, we can have b1 or b2, etc. And for a cycle of length 2, we, we have to color that with the same color, two elements. So that will give us b1 squared, or b2 squared, or bk squared for each cycle of length 2. And for the cycle of length n, we have to color all the elements, n elements, with b1, which will give us b1 to the n, or b2, which will give us b1, b2 to the n, and bk for every cycle of length n so this is exactly uh, 
사이클 모노미얼 of sigma with zi replaced by v1i dot 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 bk i. Okay. So just look at, just compare this and this. They are the same if you replace z by uh, this. So we, so here this part is equal to this part over here that I just uh, mentioned here. So if you replace this part with this part, we will get uh, the state uh, desired statement. So this is the proof of the theorem by Polya. All right. Now uh, we can use this theorem to compute the weight uh, weight enumerator for the example that we had at the beginning of this uh, video. So G equals D four, and X is vertices of a square, and Y is the colorings of the vert vertices of uh, colorings of x with let's say three colors red green and blue rgb then the weight uh, enumerator of g uh, acting on the coloring y is what by the theorem, Polya's theorem, is the cycle index of x with zi replaced by r to the i, g to the i, plus b to the i. Okay. Now we already computed this previous in before, so let's copy that down, which is down here copy and so we know the cycle indicator what we need to do here is that so this part is the same as this where we replace z1 by r plus g plus b we replace z1 r plus g plus b Squared, we replace z2 by r squared, g squared, b squared, plus replace z2 by r squared, g squared, b squared, and then we replace z4 by r to the fourth, g to the fourth, r b to the fourth, like this. So th this is a cycle indicator. And here, this tells us how many necklaces with given number of beads. So, number of necklaces uh, with two red beads. So, let's say two reds, uh, one green, one blue is equal to the coefficient of r squared g b in the above formula. So let's compute that. Here uh, from the first term we get r squared b uh, g b so 1 over 8 uh, using the multinomial theorem is 4 choose 2 comma 1 comma 1. And from the second term uh, okay. How can we get r r squared b and r squared b uh, r squared g b? In order to get r squared g b, we have to select uh, the r squared. We may select this. 
Uh, okay, so two times. Then let me use a different color. So here we can choose R squared, and then from the okay, let's do this uh, this way. Let me use let me use this below R plus G plus R plus. I just uh, rewrote that over here. In, in order to get r squared b uh, g b, we must get we must select r squared because otherwise we will have either g squared or b squared, which we don't want. And here we can select either g b like this or b g like this. There are two possibilities to select r squared b g. So it's going to be 2 times 2, 2 for this coefficient. And plus, uh, the third third term we cannot get, oh, I think I, I missed like, uh, squared here. So we cannot get r squared bg. Here we cannot get r squared bg, so it's 0, 0. That means 1 over 8, so 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial plus 4. This is going to be equal to uh, 20 okay it is 3 24 12 plus 4 so is going to be 2. So that means there are two possibilities. Let me now erase this. There are only two Possible necklaces R R G B R R G B. Yes, there are only two uh, necklace distinct necklaces because every with two two red red uh, beads, one green bead, one uh, blue bead. There are only two. This. If you think of any other anything else. They can all be obtained from one of these. So, for instance, R R G B. This can be obtained from the first one by doing this reflection. So, this is uh, a nice way to compute the number of necklaces with given uh, number of beads of each color. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Thank you.